Okay, so we're back with another plant to go through today. I was going to walk you through uh, the method that I talked about earlier, which is kind of the easy way of doing it. So what I've got here is another specimen plant. This is a very large plant in the same kind of four gallon size pot. Uh, this is my Blood Moon clone. This is a, a very special clone to me. One of my favorite plants, just solid red, great shape, really awesome plant. I've gone ahead and given it a trim and kind of a cleanup already just to uh, cut down on the length of this video because it's already getting kind of long. Uh, but I wanted to walk you through why I think this is a good candidate to kind of show you this method and why I think this is a little bit different than the one we did earlier with super heavy veins. So let me get you a little bit closer here where you can see the rhizome and exactly what the plant looks like at the base and I'll walk you through kind of what we're going to do. Okay, so starting with an overhead shot, you can see that this is a very large rhizome, lots of growth points, going to have lots and lots of flowers next year, fully mature plant. Um, and when we talked earlier about super heavy veins, the number one thing we were concerned about was that it was pushing up on the edge of the pot uh, and it was hard to kind of see in there and see distinct growth points that would be good candidates to divide. Uh, in this case, it's not pushing up on the pot quite as much as super heavy veins was, where I don't think it needs to come entirely out of the pot and get all the roots washed and all the fresh soil and everything like that. I think I repotted this actually last dormancy, so it's really not overdue for a repot, but you can see there are some cases where it's getting really close to the edge here, and I'd like to reduce those as much as possible. So these will be the growth points that I'll be dividing, and uh, I'll do my best to show you that on the tripod. Uh, might not be able to get the best view possible, but I need to have my hands free so you can see. So now I'll switch you back over and we can take a look and I can show you how I'm actually going to divide this. Okay, so when you're dividing, it's always good to go in with a plan. So kind of like we talked about before, the primary growth point I wanna focus on is the one right here. I'll probably take a couple more because you can see in other parts of the pot, it is getting a bit crowded and close to the edge. <clears throat> but this will be the one that I'll focus on for the video just to kind of show you uh, because that'll be the clearest example. So if you pull all of this back, I'm going to try my best to get all of these Philodia, these non-carnivorous leaves, all the kind of brown bits in here trimmed back so you can get a really clear view. Um, what you'll see, let's see if, if that's going to work. Uh, if you look down in here, hopefully that's a better angle. You can see there's a pretty clear growth point right where my finger is right there. That's where all the growth is coming from and you can see it's connected to this main rhizome. It's in fact starting to burrow down kind of like we talked about with super heavy veins. So that's definitely something we want to take care of before it gets any deeper in the pot and makes itself prone to rot. So in this case, this is my easy method. So I've got my big industrial sized uh, shears here. And so what I'm going to do is just stick this in here. I'm going to separate it from the rhizome by cutting straight through it. Uh, and then I'm just going to try to gently pull it up as much as possible without disturbing the roots. Uh, it's inevitable. The roots are going to get disturbed in this. That's why it's the lazy method, but the plant is going into dormancy anyway. Um, so it really shouldn't be too much of a challenge. So let me start by just getting this separated. And it's going to take some muscle here. Okay, but I think I heard a nice clean snap there. And so when I pull it up, unfortunately... Did not get a lot of uh, roots on this one like I did with super heavy veins. That's another one of the drawbacks doing this. You can't get a really clear picture of what you're working with as far as roots go. But what you can see is this is a, a healthy growing point that was definitely starting to burrow down. And you can see some roots here. This uh, division will respond. It will root itself out. It'll be just fine. Uh, the lack of roots is a little bit concerning, so I may keep it in the greenhouse over the winter. Uh, but it will root just fine, might be a little bit slower to really get going. Uh, but again, that's kind of the drawback when we, we talk about doing this. So this is easy and quick, uh, but you know, you might not be able to get as clean or as many divisions as you would otherwise like to do. But I'll get this cleaned up and potted up. And like I said, it'll be just fine. Uh, might just not have quite as impressive of a spring show next year. Um, but you know, it should do just fine and will grow into a nice mature plant. Okay, so I was able to go through and get one more division. This one has slightly better roots on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and repot these up just like I showed you with super heavy veins. One thing when you're dealing with plants that have a very light root system like this one, you do want to go ahead and trim these leaves really, really aggressively. That way uh, the plant will not be prone to toppling over in a windstorm. Any kind of wind catches this, these nice big leaves, it'll just kind of flop over uh, and will struggle to get rooted. So go ahead and trim these pretty aggressively. 
Okay, and very last thing for Blood Moon before we move on. Um, I did get one very small division in this case, which has absolutely no roots. Uh, I don't know how in focus I can really get that, but hopefully you can kind of get an idea. You can see it's got a growth point right here, no roots, just snapped right off the rhizome. Um, I would give this a 50-50 shot of surviving, but I'm going to give it a go anyway and give it a shot. So the best thing I can do to try and see if this will root and continue to grow for me uh, is to bury it nice and deep in there so it doesn't move around uh, and then keep it very, very wet. So if you have a division like this and you want to give it a shot, just bury it nice, deep uh, and keep it very wet. And then maybe it'll develop some roots and start to grow from there. I don't know if I got enough of the rhizome in this case, but uh, we're going to give it a shot and we'll see how it does. Okay, so for my last uh, video in the series, I was going to take you through kind of a more common setup for what I might be doing when I'm dividing. Uh, I was going to show you a few more. Let me know if you have any specific questions, but video is already getting kind of long. So I wanted to walk you through one final example. Uh, this is probably more typical than the previous examples I used. This is like a three to five year plant. Uh, it's in a one gallon pot and it is just bursting out the sides. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to flex and push up against the sides. So this thing has been ready to be repotted probably for at least a year now. Uh, so I'm finally getting around to it. It's a, a really nice Moriai, it's a seed grown clone, uh, but it's not, you know, one that I'm dying to have a big mother plant of, one that I really want to be specimen size to reach full maturity and just to show off in the spring like the other two were. Uh, this is definitely a nice plant that I'm gonna keep some pieces of one that I'm probably more likely to divide into several sections and then use it as kind of a sales plant or to give away to friends or you know just to show it off just to have some extra pieces. If I did want this to be a really large plant I would simply repot it into a bigger pot and let it keep going. Uh, but given the the space constraints that I'm dealing with I'm going to go ahead and probably split this into a few different plants and I'm not going to keep one that's going to be you know my main mother plant or anything like that. I will keep one just because it's a nice plant and I want to have it growing, uh, but I'm not going to like keep one big chunk and then have a few small divisions off of it. This one I'm going to fully split up, so I thought it would be important to walk you through that. Um, like I said though, let me know if you have any questions. This video is just getting kind of long, so I didn't want this to be even longer. Uh, so this will be the last example that I will show you and I'll take you in close now. I'm going to get this nice and cleaned up and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so as I mentioned, this plant was long overdue for a repot. You can see just how pushed up against the edges it was that the rhizome was starting to send these growth points down deep to reach out and around. Uh, it was just jammed up in that pot. Uh, so this is definitely a do as I say, not as I do. This plant should have been repotted uh, at least last year, probably the year before if I'm being completely honest. Um, but you can see over here, this is the pot it was in and you can see how it's all bent up and misshapen because of uh, the plant pushing up against it. So these are resilient plants, they're strong. Uh, in some cases, if you even neglect them for a while, as long as they're happy, they'll keep on growing. Uh, so you gotta make sure that you're staying on top of them and repotting them when it's appropriate. Uh, so given that that is the case, this is one, like I said, that I'm gonna split into uh, probably looking at it around four to five plants. Uh, and all of those will be pretty mature. So go ahead and split these up. I would normally just kind of take my hand in here and try and split it off. It's been a cold day though, and so the soil's pretty packed in. Okay, I was able to do that one. So here's one, you can see, nice good root system here, uh, nice new plant. So I'll go ahead and put that off to the side. This other one I'll probably need to use my shears for, just it's getting so deep in here. These roots are really tangled, uh, so I'll probably need to use my shears. Again, you're gonna st stress out the root system, uh, kind of no matter which way you go. It's just, this thing is so root bound and <clears throat> so overgrown that it's kind of inevitable. Uh, just do your best to try and reduce that as much as possible. So here you can see another one uh, and several growth points here. I don't even know if this is gonna be, yeah, once you get it like this, you can see that I can't really pot this up because if I pot this up where the main growth points up here are on the soil, uh, then this one's going to be buried low. So I'm going to go ahead and split it again. So now we're up to two plants, or sorry, three plants uh, from this. And we still got the main chunk to go. And you can see the rhizome down here underground. Not good, not what you want. Uh, this plant was happy nonetheless. It kept growing because it's a strong and vigorous plant. Uh, but again, do as I say, not as I do. If you notice a plant like this, it's time to go ahead and, uh, and do something about it. 
So go ahead and split this one. So now we're up to four plants. We'll take a look at this one once we get it separated. Whoops, there it goes. Again, uh, the growth points are a little bit of a tangle, but that one should do just fine. So there's four. All right. Okay. As far as growth divisions go, I'm gonna make another snap here. I talked about kind of looking for white live rhizome. That's what it looks like when you snap it. Again, you can use scissors. This is not a very clean cut. Uh, this is my lazy method, still works. Uh, but if you use uh, scissors, that's probably a little bit more recommended uh, as far as disease and hygiene and things like that. But this is fine. And you can see that kind of white piece right there. That's what you're looking for. That means that that rhizome is still alive and kicking. Uh, and so this one, it's a decent size. Well, I'll split it one more time just for good measure. All right, and a little guy right there. So let's see, we've got one, we've got two, three, four, five, that'll be a big one, six, and seven. And those are only the pieces with, uh, with um, not, not counting our, our back rise I'm cutting. So only the pieces with growing points. Again, if you want to, you could even take something like this, split it one more time. Now you're up to eight. You've just got a slightly smaller division to work with. Um, so again, really, really easy method to make a lot of plants, especially if you have something special that you've grown from seed or that is a rare plant that's, uh, you know, a lot of people want. Uh, it's a very, very efficient way of doing that. Uh, and this is something you should be doing every winter if you have a large collection, you wanna propagate more plants or if you just wanna create more plants to give out to friends, to sell, whatever, to trade, all of that, uh, this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, and it's really, really super easy. I know it can be intimidating to kind of perform surgery and butcher your plants like this, but like I mentioned all the time, these are really tough plants. Uh, they will come back, they will be just fine. Uh, and in fact, in a case like this, where it's a plant that I'm not gonna repot it, uh, this plant probably would have declined next year. It could have even died because it was just bunched up in that pot. It was going to grow lower. It was probably going to deal with rot next year. It was not going to look its best. Uh, by dividing it, uh, if I wasn't going to repot it anyway, I've actually given it a much better shot at growing, you know, into multiple healthy plants versus one big clump that's in a, a pot that's too small that's going to decline. Uh, so again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know that when I started out, a lot of this was really intimidating, and I hope that uh, this helps kind of ease your mind and put you at ease and help you understand a little bit better about how I do it. Uh, but the important thing to remember, again, I say it all the time, these are easy, tough plants. Uh, they're vigorous, so don't be too concerned about it. They can take a lot. As long as they have a good root system uh, and they're well cared for, they will do just fine. Uh, so thanks again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Hey guys, so if you noticed kind of an awkward edit in that last video, I tried to do a back rhizome cutting while I was in the process of dividing this plant. It didn't go as planned, and unfortunately I wasn't able to get a really good piece of back rhizome to show you that. But in the process of cleaning these up and getting ready to uh, repot them, I noticed a really good example where I can show you a back rhizome cutting. So here we have a single division growth point uh, plant, or sorry, a single growth point division right here. And you can see it's got a really nice rhizome here in the back. Let me see if I can turn that. That's kind of what you're looking for, that kind of stem loggy shape like that. Uh, this indicates that this is a plant that would be really good for a back rhizome cutting. Now, unfortunately, the growth point itself here does not have a really developed root system, but it has enough to survive. So uh, for educational purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and take a back rhizome cutting here so you can get a better idea and see a better example. So let me go ahead and take my scissors and I'll try and make sure you remain in view with the best possible view, but I'm gonna take my scissors. Hopefully you can see where I'm at here. And I'm just gonna cut it. Oh. So here is the growth point, And I am left with a division that looks like this. Nice root system still, and a good old chunk of, uh, of rhizome there. Let me see, uh, that's what you're looking for, kind of right here. Uh, so this is a really good back rhizome cutting. Uh, I mentioned in the other video, I don't know if I'm going to be able to clip it or not, but uh, year one, this will have very small growth points. It will look kind of like a seedling, won't do very much. 
Uh, but by year two, because this has a developed root system, uh, once it gets that growth point up and going, it's gonna look almost mature year two and be a very nice looking plant. Uh, so a great way to kind of maximize how many divisions you can take if you're trying to take a lot of divisions of a particular plant. Uh, they often have this back rhizome where there's no growth points, nothing's going to happen from it anyway. So if you're dividing, uh, this is a really good way if you're not worried about space and you have a little bit of patience to wait two years uh, to divide your plants and create even more divisions that way. And so here's what I'm left with. I have 10 plants here. Uh, that's pretty amazing for what was just a one, one gallon sized pot uh, plant and a really nice looking one. I'm gonna see if I can dig up a photo for you guys to see. Uh, but you can see I've got five large ones and I know they might look a little bit small in those one gallon pots, but believe me, they had huge root systems and that's why they went into one gallons. Uh, and then I've got five of these medium sized, including this back rhizome cutting here. So 10 plants from a single one gallon size pot. That's what you can really do uh, if you're looking to maximize how many plants you want to make. Uh, with the specimen plants, we of course, we're a little bit more conservative wanting to keep our, our mother plants looking nice. Uh, but in the case that you're willing to totally split things up and just create as many as possible, 10 plants uh, from that. And I could have made even more. A lot of these have multiple growth points. Uh, it could have been split even further. So. Hope you enjoyed uh, and thanks again for watching.